Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today I'm going to show you how to make a compost barrel. Specifically, we're going to use we're going to we're going to boldly rip off Dave's fetid swamp water. Well, my friend David over at the Survival Gardening Channel with David the Good, um, I have talked to him many times, and I've even visited his house. I've been in his home and eaten dinner there. But uh, one of the things that I've always admired about David is his resourcefulness and how to reuse stuff out of the garden to make your garden better. One of the things that I've enjoyed about David the Good is his resourcefulness. And he has taught me in his book, Compost Everything, and in his videos, how to fertilize your garden for free. A couple years ago, I did an experiment where I fertilized my okra plants that were in pots with his Dave's fetid swamp water side by side with fish emulsion and the results were well you couldn't tell the difference the fertilizer from dave's method worked just as well as fish emulsion maybe even better so what i'm going to do today is up my volume i have been practicing this uh, dave's fetid swamp water idea in a five gallon bucket for many years and it's been serving me well but it's not enough i need more i need more fertilizer so what i've done is i got a, a 55 gallon drum and I'm going to start making Dave's fetid swamp water in the 55 gallon drum. So notice the taper on this barrel. I was not able to get barrels with a removable lid, so we're going to have to be creative. That barrel over there uh, tapers also, but this one tapers right here. This is the thinnest part. So we're going to cut this off right about here. And we're going to cut that one off further down so we can form a lid. There we go. Now this one is going to form the lid. I hope, I hope I've calculated the, uh, the diameter as well. I'm gonna cut along this band here and this will set on top of that drum as a lid. All right, let's get the cut. Okay, now the moment of truth. We've cut this one down at its narrowest point. We've cut the other one off at its widest point. Will they nest together like a Russian doll and give me a lid for a barrel that didn't come with a lid? Let's see. Oh yeah, like butter. Like butter. All right. That's awesome. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Dave's fetid swamp water, um, it's just an anaerobic bacterial breakdown of weeds and organic material in water. It is a, uh, a way to make compost tea without aeration. And yeah, it's gonna be bad stuff in there if you put it on your plants and then eat your, eat your fruit right away. Um, anaerobic breakdown, anaerobic composting, um, perfectly safe if you give it a little bit of time for the oxygen in your environment to break down the anaerobic microbes and uh, for those to die off a couple days so anaerobic breakdown it does the same thing as aerobic breakdown you don't have to put an aerator in here you don't have to do all that JDAM stuff just let everything rot down and it becomes like almost like raw sewage and that's why we have to have the top this stuff stinks bad but what we're gonna do is take all of our weeds, all of our noxious plants, uh, those weeds that have been growing in our garden, all that organic material has been bringing up nutrition from the soil. And we wanna capture that nutrition by putting it in here and rotting it down. And what that will do is once everything's rotted down, those, there'll be no seeds in here that can germinate. There'll be nothing left um, that can harm your garden. There'll only be the organic materials from the weeds. 
And so what we're going to do is take this big pile of uh, refuse from my garden. Got a lot of morning glory in there. A lot of stuff I don't want in my garden that has been feeding off of my garden. I want to capture those nutrients in my barrel here. Let them rot down and we can siphon off the juice from this, uh, this rot process and make it into a wonderful fertilizer for the garden. A wonderful anaerobic brew. It is it is gross it stinks to high heaven but it's good stuff your plants don't know the difference they don't smell uh, all they know is they get the the nutrients that have been re released by this rotting material in your in your barrel here and wow it makes a good fertilizer so let's get to making this stuff weeds have already been breaking down over here but the problem with this compost I'm making in this pile is they're filled with weeds and seeds seeds from weeds and they're just waiting to germinate in the spring I don't want that I want to put them in here render them uh, dead all right all right the more I can pack in here the more attrition I can draw out of my garden there's some okra leftovers in here. A lot of weeds, a lot of grasses. Yeah, this is good. So we'll jam it down in there. I'm gonna fill it all the way to the top. That's what I need. Awesome. We can get some more in there. Pack it down. All this is gonna rot and become liquefied. There will be some leftovers that you gotta siphon off. But man, we can we can put a lot of stuff in here. There's some Malabar spinach going in, some morning glory vine, okra leftovers, some citrus. I don't know what that is. That's one of my herbs from my uh, from my medicinal garden. Lots of seeds there, <clears throat> and they will gladly start themselves given the chance but we're gonna make sure that they are dead and rendered inert There's an okra pod look out Phoebe look out okra stalks a little bit of my neighbor's plant right there coming under the fence peach tree root ball this is a root stalk that I cannot grow I don't have what it takes to grow it I don't have the room to grow it it was a failed peach tree project. It's going in there. Now notice there's a lot of dirt in here too. That's good for your garden, good for your fetid swamp water. Any minerals in there, that's good for the good for the brew. Got another root ball here. Don't know what it's from. And it goes. All kind of stuff back here. These need to go into the bucket. Into the bucket. Okra. Last year's okra. Lots and lots and lots of Malabar spinach. Now it's a little oblong, so we'll reshape it a little bit so we can get our lid on there. But I'm not going to put the lid on just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let the rain fill this up tomorrow and the next day. We've got rain projected for a couple of days and as long as it's raining that's free water and that's the best water, rain water without chemicals. I'm going to let it rain in that bucket and for a couple of days or however long it rains I'm going to let it fill up. Uh, then when I need to I'm going to come and top it off uh, with, with uh, more water until it's all the way full to the top and I'm going to keep my bucket that I just cut the lid off, I'm going to keep that out to catch rain as well and I'm going to put that under my downspout uh, and I'm going to try to catch water from there. And if we get that rainwater, we'll add it to this bucket. What we're going to do then is cover it. Once it's full to the top with rainwater, cover it and leave it for two, three, four months. And what that's going to do is, man, that's going to rot nasty. It's going to, it's going to turn into raw sewage. But 
that raw sewage is gold for your garden. What I'll even do is come and add compost materials to that. Anything you put in your compost, you can put in this brew. Uh, you can put urine in it. I mean, I don't know if you want to do that, but that's a great source of nitrogen. And well, if it goes in there, it goes into your garden, it's good stuff for the soil. And what this will do is kickstart your soil. It's just as good as any fish emulsion, if not better. If you can get hold of some seaweed, uh, we're close to the coast and when the seaweed shed comes in, I'll go down there and grab me about 15 pounds of sargasso weed, throw it in there as well. And this will be a constant and ongoing source of nutrients for my garden. We will always be adding to this. It'll be a permanent fixture in the garden, a permanent rot, a permanent brew. And this fetid swamp water, Dave's fetid swamp water, go watch David the Good, he'll teach you how to make this stuff uh, better than I can. But we're gonna keep that bucket full and we're gonna water our garden with it whenever we need to fertilize. And that's a good way to take the, the minerals, the, the, <clears throat> the nutrients in your garden that have been robbed by weeds and reclaim them. This is my Dave's fetid swamp water. This has been going for two, maybe two and a half years. And so what's in here is really vile but it's really good stuff. Now you notice there's pumpkin seeds in here. There's all kinds of leafy material in here. A lot of this cellulose will not rot even after several, you know, two years, but what's in it has rotted out into the water. And so this solution, which smells awful, especially when I stir up what's on the bottom, this is gnarly, gnarly stuff. But this has been ongoing for two years and I've been using it to fertilize my garden. So let me show you what it looks like. I have my little cup, my little dipper here. And so what I'll do is I'll get some of this brown liquid, try to avoid the pumpkin seeds, strain them out. But what I'll do is take this brown liquid, that's gardening gold right there. And I will dilute this, maybe uh, three to three parts of this to seven parts water and I'll water my garden with it, and that's instant fertilizer. This is good stuff, great stuff. All right, I've skimmed off all those pumpkin seeds and I can just get some pure liquid here. That's liquid gold. It's like bone broth in the kitchen. It's the bone broth of the garden. And what I'll do is I'll put several, three or four scoops of this into my watering can. Move, Phoebe, move. Ah, 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 ah. No, don't drink that. Good thing dogs have a better constitution in their stomachs than we do, huh? I'll put this in my watering bucket. One more. There we go. That is garden gold. Let's go fertilize. No, no. 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 What we have now is gardening gold. This anaerobic brew will be rendered safe by the air, by the oxygen in the air, and by in all those air pockets in your soil. This anaerobic bacterial will die. It can't live in the presence of oxygen. So one, two, three, four days later, this stuff is rendered safe. So let's go put it on the garden. Let's go water our plants. We've had an unusual warm spell in December and my garlic is growing really strong here. You can see the garlic's doing great. My dill is all like a tree. Um, this garlic is gonna go to sleep when the freezing temperatures come, but while it's growing right now, I'm gonna go ahead and give it some fertilizer, let it, uh, let it take that in. That way, when it goes to sleep, when the real cold temperatures come, it'll be in a good place. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this bed. All right, we got a little left over. Citrus does not go dormant. It grows throughout the year. It is an evergreen, so to speak. And uh, although you have to protect it from the, the cold weather, well, that's why I have it in these containers. I can take it in my garage, um, but they can use fertilizer year round. So I'm gonna put the rest of my Dave's fetid swamp water on my citrus.
Well, that's the plan. That's what we're going to do. I'll update you on how things go and we'll use this stuff throughout the spring and I'll show you how good this is for the garden. It's really a, a great source to reclaim the nutrients in your garden that the weeds rob and to uh, recycle. You don't have to throw this stuff away. All the weeds you pull out of the garden, especially those really noxious weeds like, I mean, the, the, the things that you just hate that can't you can't get rid of. For me, it's nut grass. It is uh, morning glory vines. And there's a, there's a stinky vine that grows here with tubers underground. I forgot what it's called. It doesn't really have a common name, but it stinks, it's gnarly, it's nasty, it's invasive. I can throw that in my Dave's Fetid Swamp Water bucket and rot that stuff down. It will not regrow. It will release everything that's robbed from my land and put it back into the garden. So what a great way to recycle. What a great way to be resourceful. What a great way to be cheap and get fertilizer that is inexpensive. Now there are gonna be those naysayers who say, oh, you should aerate that stuff. Oh, you should be careful with that stuff. Oh, that's not the way to do it. You know, fooey on those guys. <clears throat> people have been doing this for centuries. People have been doing this for the, you know, as long as people have had gardens. And as long as you exercise some wisdom and a little bit of uh, care when you use this stuff, it's great stuff for your garden. Don't let people tell you how to garden. Don't let people tell you that, oh, it's unsafe. Oh, it's not good. Oh, you should have an aerator. Oh, you shouldn't use that bacteria. Anaerobic's gonna kill you. No, do what you need to do to fertilize your garden. Be independent of the dogma. Don't buy in to all the master gardener nonsense that is put out there on the internet. Garden the way gardening works and nutrition is nutrition. Your plants don't know if it's anaerobic or not. All you have to do is exercise some caution and some wisdom when you use it and you'll be fine. Your garden will thank you. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for joining me today on Black Umbo Southern Gardening. I'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.